Hey guys, Alex here and welcome back to another video and welcome to this four part series, A Beginner's Guide to Building Muscle. But before we get started, make sure you smash that like button, click subscribe so you don't miss out on the future episodes. The first episode today is all about training. So, the reason why the training part is so important is because when we're working out and we're using our muscles, we're tearing our muscle fibers so that they grow back bigger and stronger. And without working out, that won't happen. When you're a beginner, you have this wonderful opportunity to build muscle a lot easier than if you were an experienced lifter. I like to call this beginner gains. And this is because your body is not used to this type of training or any type of training, so the results come a lot quicker. You may even be able to get pretty good results in building muscle in just bodyweight exercises like push-ups, pull-ups, squats and lunges and so on. There will probably come a time where results will slow down and you hit a plateau and that will be a sign that your body needs to be pushed more and to start using weights. One of the key things I remind people about is technique. So many people are so concerned about lifting as heavy as they possibly can to show off in the gym and so on that they forget about technique and their technique just gets worse and worse and worse. Of course, it's really important to load the body and stress the body to get the results. However, having the right technique is more important than that. Maintaining good technique will help you prevent injury, which is massively important for being consistent in building muscle, as well as having a better mind-to-muscle contraction, meaning you'll have a better squeeze, a better contraction of the muscles that you're working. Compound exercises are exercises that involve multiple joints, such as squats, deadlifts, presses, and pulls. And these are exercises that should make up most of your training, most of your workouts, especially as a beginner. These exercises will work all the major muscle groups in your body, helping you build most muscle. Compound exercises, when lifted in a heavy exercise, like a heavy squat or a heavy deadlift, also really stresses out your central nervous system. And by doing that, that can help release the human growth hormone, which helps you build even more muscle as well. So what I'm trying to say is stop skipping leg day because it's so much more valuable than you think. So stop skipping it. So that leaves us with isolation exercises. Isolation exercises are exercises that involve just one joint, such as a bicep curl or a leg extension. And they may not be as important to you as a beginner. However, they certainly have their place. Isolation exercises will help you target a specific muscle to make it grow and a good workout plan and a good workout should consist of both compound and isolation exercises. Consistency is everything. By the law of supercompensation, your body will recover from the stress of training and then compensate by increasing strength and fitness, etc. If you're not able to train again at the peak of supercompensation, then the chances of making progress is reduced. A good training program will have you working these muscle groups again in time to take advantage of this. Which leads me to progressive overload, which is the gradual increase of stress on your body during training. So it's not only important for you to be consistent, but it's also important for you to continuously make your workouts harder over time and also increase how much your body has to work. This can be achieved in the form of increasing frequency, decreasing rest, or increasing reps, sets, and or weight. The body needs a chance to repeat the same exercises over and over again with progressive overload to make progress. However, with that being said, if you went to the gym and repeated the same exercises over and over again for years and years and years, like I see many people do, you'll really struggle to make any progress in the long run. Which is why variety is also massively key. And variety can be achieved through a workout split, different exercises, different equipment, even the time of day or the order of the workout split that you're doing. So in the gym, you damage your body. You tear those muscle fibers and you won't build muscle unless you give your body a chance to repair and recover. This ultimately happens when you're sleeping. However, if you're a beginner, then you will most probably need a full day of recovery or a few, two or three full days of recovery alongside your workout days as well. If you continue to train without recovering, then that can lead to something called overtraining. 
And if you are overtrained, then you'll really, really struggle to build muscle or even maintain muscle. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this in the lifestyle episode of this series, so look out for it. I touched on it briefly a minute ago, and that is you need a plan. You need to follow a plan that you can keep to, and you need to follow a plan that goes through everything that I've spoken about so far in this episode. You also need a workout plan that is well balanced. I know what it's like. You walk into a gym and if you don't have a plan, you just go back to your favorite exercises. You go to the exercises that you like and you avoid the exercises you don't like. I did it for years and years and years. I only trained the muscles that I could see, my chest, my arms, my abs, and my quads. And then I completely ignored all the exercises that involved my back, my glutes, my hamstrings. And it's taken me years and years and years to build that imbalance back up. And imbalances and weaknesses is not what you want. So a balanced program is very important. A beginner workout plan can depend on many things in your lifestyle, but a workout split that I recommend is upper body and lower body, then rest, and then upper body, lower body, and then rest, and then keep repeating that. Secondly, you could also try a push-pull legs, then rest, and a push-pull legs, then rest, and keep repeating that. Like I said, this is utilizing big compound exercises and then adding on some isolation at the end. But what about cardio? Many people would think that burning calories would be counterproductive to building muscle. But take a look at a sprinter's physique. A sprinter does a lot of cardio and they're extremely muscular, extremely fit, and carry a lot of muscle with them. But the type of cardio that they're doing is high intensity. So I do recommend that you do some HIIT training alongside your weight training program so that you can gain fitness, burn calories, burn fat, whilst also supporting muscle growth at the same time. So that is my ultimate guide to building muscle in regards to training. Make sure you look out for my next episodes in nutrition, lifestyle, and mindset. And if you're looking for a training program that puts all of this into action, then download my Crocfit app and start training with me right now. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you give it a thumbs up, click subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Oh, 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 oh,